Today we're going to look at IntelliFront BI. Um, IntelliFront BI is our dashboard and KPI tool with added benefits of being able to schedule CRIS reports, SSRS reports, and Power BI reports. Um, down the left-hand side here, you will see our main menu. Um, we have a workshop, which is where you'll find reporting for creating dashboards and KPIs and canvases. Automation for scheduling our reporting needs and automation workflows. We also have an integrations library for Crystal Reports, SSRS, and Power BI. Users and groups where you can set up unlimited amount of users and assign them to groups. And we also have um, an administration for error logs, settings, and history. Or administration is where you can fully customize IntelliFront BI to have company logo, company colors, and we will show you that a little bit later on. We're going to start with dashboards of how to create a dashboard. So with dashboards, what you want to be able to do is to select new dashboard and create a name for your dashboard. The data that we're going to look at today is sales data from Black Friday shopping. Um, and the best thing to do when creating a dashboard is to ask yourself three to five questions about what it is that you want to get from the data. Um, so I am just going to call this Black Friday Shopping. And I'm going to save the dashboard. And I'm going to select the data set that I want to pull the information from. And I can add a tag for my dashboard. So if I wanted to, I can put in this is sales. Um, what that enables me to do is later on is I can say that this dashboard is for my sales team. I could create a tag and say this one's for my administration team and only the administrators can see that information. If you want to put a description of the dashboard that you can and you simply write here, And groups is where you assign groups. So who can actually see this dashboard? Do you only want it to be available for um, sales team, all users, um, administrators only? It's entirely up to you, but you would select that from groups here. And then you choose the option to build your dashboard. So here you can see all the different types of charts that you can include in your dashboard. Um, the question that I want to ask is who spends more, men or women? Um, I also want to know if marital status has an effect on the spend. So if they're single, do they spend more? If they're married, do they spend more? Um, and the other thing that I would like to know is age group. So who spends more? Is it the 18 to 20, 30 to 35 age group, that sort of information. So I've got my three questions. Now I need to think about what kind of chart is going to show that best for me. So we have lots of different options. We have a grid, we have pie charts, bar charts, scatter charts, um, a lot of information here. Um, we're gonna start today with a chart and this is my tools kit down the left hand side here. And what I need to do is I need to bring in the data from my data set. So I click here to bind the item to the data in my data set. So my question is, <clears throat> who spends more, men or women? So the first thing I need to do is put in a value. So my value is going to be spend. Um, and I don't, if you look down here, I don't really have exactly what I want. Um, so I am going to create a purchase in a sum. So we have to create a formula for that. So we click here. And my calculated field is going to be purchase number. Okay. And 
we need to write a SQL statement to pull back that information. All right, so we've added the um, total amount and I have a sum for the purchased amount um, on Black Friday, but that is a total. That is males and females together. So what we want to do is we want to separate that. So I'm going to add an argument to my dashboard and I'm going to pick gender. And this will split the data into females who spend a lot less than the males. The other thing that we can do here is we can actually add um, some coloring options um, to this so that it, it differentiates between men and women a little bit easier. Um, and here I want to actually add my color to males and females. So in the arguments under gender, I will switch the coloring on. And you can see there that we have now two different colors. <clears throat> So the other thing that I would like to do with this chart is I would like to give it a name. Currently it's called chart one, as you can see there in the top left. So to do that, we need to um, click into my little toolbox. Under common, we have the caption and I will call this who spends more. And that has given the chart a new caption. So the next thing that we wanted to do, my second question was, if you're married or if you're single, does that make a difference to how much you spend? So what we can now do is we can add in a, another chart. And for this, we'll do a pie chart. So we click on the pie chart on the left. And it will automatically appear on the dashboard. Again, we need to bind this to our data in our data set. So my value again is going to be the purchase. And I want it as a sum. OK, so the total number spent combined. And then we have an argument. I want to know if people are married. So what we can do is another formula. We will call this is married. So here is my formula for if somebody is married or single. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to actually add a series to see whether married men spend more, married women spend more. So I'm going to add a series of gender. So now I have two charts to show the married males, married, um, and then we have singles and married and singles. So we have males and females. So I have two charts. Again, we are wanting to put a name on the chart. Oops. Into the caption here. I will just call this one marital status. And you can choose to show the pie captions on or off. If you take them off, it will look like this. If you want to put them back on, you'll see that you get your F for females and for males. If you want to change the coloring, you can do that here. If you want to add some labels, you can do that here also. But these are my two charts. So I've got female information on who spends more, males or females. And then we have information on whether married females or single females spend more, married males or single males spend more. Um, my third question is to do with age and whether or not age range has a part to play in how much people spend. So for that, I'm going to incorporate a grid. 
and this is my grid. And we will add in some information. So in my grid, I want to add a column. And the first one is going to be age. I want to add another column and I want to know the gender. And my other column, I want to know marital status. I want to interrogate the data. I want to know, um, oops, and we'll actually use my is married um, <clears throat> because otherwise we get zeros and ones and that's not quite what we want. Okay. So here you can see you've got the different age ranges. You've got whether they're female, whether they're married. And the final thing that we need to know is how much they spend. So my last column is going to be the spend amount. So here we have a grid. We have a pie chart, which gives us the top view, who spends more. We have the different age breakdown, whether they're male, female, married, single, and how much they spend. And we also have a visual pie chart to depict that information. The final thing that I want to do with my dashboard is I want to add a filter. Um, and what a filter will allow me to do or the end user to do is to pick up a different age. So if they just want to focus on 18 to 25 or they just want to focus on 36 to 45, they can do that using a filter. And we're going to add a list box. Okay, and my list box has appeared here. So my dimension for the list box is going to be age. And I am going to accept that as it is for now. <clears throat> what I don't like about this right now is that it's a bit big um, and it's kind of in the wrong place. I don't really want a list box at the bottom. So you can pick this up and we can move it. Um, to the left here. You can see that the line on the left is blue. So if I drop it, it will appear at the top. And the other thing that we can do here is we can make it slightly smaller. Okay, so we still have our charts and we have our pie charts at the bottom. We want to change the title of our list box. So we should do that. And I will call it age filter. So if you wanted to interrogate the data, you could simply select the different boxes. And the data will change depending on the filters that you have selected. So all pie charts will change depending on whatever filters I've selected. If you want all, you can select all and the data will go back. So this is a dashboard that answers three simple questions. Who spends more, males or females? Which age group spends more? And are they married or are they single? And then I can filter that information using my age filter down the left hand side. So once you have created the dashboard, um, you can save it. Click this menu here and click on the save option. Okay, it may also prompt when you exit to save dashboard to make sure everything that you want is still there and you can just click OK. When you click OK, you have here the dashboard um, and you have some options. Um, if you click build, that will enable you to edit the dashboard. View will enable you to view the dashboard as a user would. You have some actions here so that you can import a definition of a dashboard or export. Export the definition of a dashboard is particularly useful if you want to share the base of the dashboard. And by that, I mean you can say export the formulas, you can export the template of the dashboard, and then a colleague in another section of the business 
can use that dashboard and link it to their data. So they would then have the same pie charts, they would have the same grid, it would just display their data. So that can be particularly useful. If you've had some information shared with you and you are creating a dashboard that way, you would select the import definition of the dashboard. So you can share dashboards between the company, between de departments, um, between different people, and they then can link it to their own data. So that can be quite useful. We will just do one more save before we move on. Now we're going to create a KPI. A KPI is a key performance indicator, and you can create as many KPIs as you want to. To create a new KPI, select new KPI card here. Give the KPI a name, and we're going to base this off sales. And we will save it. We will add our tag, and we can add a description. Oops, six. The data set that we're going to use for this one is our sales data set. And we're going to choose sales. And you will notice that the KPI card is yellow. Um, this can be customized, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So the data that we want to pull onto this KPI card, I want to do a sum, because I want to know an amount. I want to show it to two decimal places. And my KPI unit is going to be dollars. Um, and I actually want that dollar sign before the KPI because that's how it's written. So I select before KPI. Um, now, do I want a goal? So if my sales team have a goal, um, we can enter in a goal amount here. So let's just say it's 700,000. And I want them to meet that target. So right now, the sales are $608,846.76. So they are currently short of their target. And you can see that right here. So you set a goal, and this will give them an indication of whether they are on target, below target, or above target. The appearance of the KPI, if you want to change it. So maybe you want to have it green. You can change the color right here. And if you want to add um, a little picture, we'll put some a dollar bill on there. Um, you can add that here, and this can be changed very quickly. Again, KPIs are assigned to groups, so they can be accessible to everybody, or you can choose um, a set amount of people that can see this information. The next thing we're going to have a look at is canvases. A canvas is for the end user of the software, and they may have ability to access 100 dashboards. They may have the ability to access 200 KPIs, but they have a set amount of KPIs that they're really interested in and a few dashboards that they're really interested in. So they can set up their own canvas, so whenever they log in, this is their screen, this is what they would see. Their home screen would be their canvas. So to create a new canvas, we can simply click New Canvas. We add a name for our canvas, Sales Data Canvas. We save it. You can add a description, All Sales Data. And they can choose from the available KPIs. The only KPIs that they will see in this list is any KPIs that the administrator has made available to them. Um, so we can add um, this particular KPI and we drag and drop. Um, now it does matter which order you drag and drop these because these will appear left to right on the screen on the front. So um, make sure that they're pulled across in the right order that you want to view. The next thing that we need to do is the available dashboards. So again, you drag and drop, and you can have six dashboards. I will choose four. Okay, and then again, you can assign a canvas to a group if you wanted to. 
and it could be available to everybody and we'll save and I will click save again and then we'll go to I'll just click into KPIs to come back out to my canvases and here's my sales data canvas so I've got my four KPIs that I chose and I have my dashboards that I chose so this is dashboard one and here you can scroll through to see the other dashboards and they will appear at the bottom and you just scroll through if this is the user's favorite canvas then they can actually star this canvas and this will always be the default canvas that appears when they log into Intellifront. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.